Buenas, buenas. Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome to our first uh, in this series of Money Talks. We're going to talk with Silvina Moschini about the future of investments, how to invest in startups and pre-IPOs. Silvina, uh, I would like to introduce you as a lot of things. You're, you're, you, 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 you managed to take a company uh, to unicorn status, and you're also executive producer of the show unicornhunters.com. It's great talking to you, and, and, and it's great to have the opportunity to share this time with you. Thank you, Diego. I'm super excited about this opportunity to talk to you, but also to uh, many of the people out there. Many of them are our investors. Many of them are our friends. And many are people who want to know how they can make big money by identifying companies that are potentially going to be the next unicorn at a very early stage. So they can make a lot of money by being part of the shareholders and being part of their journey. Yeah. And this is why you, you're producing a TV show called Unicorn Hunters. Uh, could you tell me just a little bit about it, please? I can tell you a lot about it, Diego. This is a part of our journey, as you know. I'm a technology entrepreneur. I uh, embrace one concept that as women, we many times uh, relate very closely, which is we skirt the rules. We think creatively outside the box to find ways to get things done and to build, in this case, exponential organizations. So we raise money using the JOBS Act. The JOBS Act, for people uh, that are not familiar with that, is a regulation that President Obama brought to uh, empower small and medium businesses, startups and scale-ups, to raise money by advertising the selling of a small part of the company, of their equity to private individuals, to retail investors. So, so that would be, in a, in a way, it would be like crowdfunding, an IPO, something like that. If we could yeah, say something, very... Something like this around that, that space, they are uh, within the Jobs Act, uh, many different uh, regulations or uh, instruments that can be used. And I will invite our team to share information with our audience about the video of President Obama that is in our website at Unicorn Hunters where he explains what the Jobs Act is, is about. But in general terms, it's allowing people like you, like me, like many of the people in our audience to identify companies that have the potential to be the next SpaceX, the next Facebook, and invest from a smaller amount in these companies when they are young enough so they yeah. can make a difference. What, one tiny thing, you can ask questions. We have the, 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 the open panel for, for questions and we'll, we'll get to them uh, in the course of this conversation. Anyway, um, Silvina, so let's get back to the show. Uh, what happens in the show? Tell me just very quickly, you, you choose companies that will come and tell you about what they do and... And they have potentially the opportunity to get a lot of money. But the most interesting thing, Diego, is that we are creating a new genre. We call it yeah. entertainment because it is entertainment, because we created a show that is exciting. It has um, a lot of uh, great information, nice dynamic. It's a, a business show, but it can also allow people on the other side of the screen to co-invest. So the companies that are presented in our show has gone through a very comprehensive uh, due diligence and selection process. They pitch their business, why they need the money. So as a circle of money, which is a group of investors, and I will tell you more about that, we decided whether we will invest or not. And then we invite people in the audience to join us as co-investors. And it's super, super exciting, fast-paced, interesting, educating, and of course, we seek to make it entertaining as well. Yeah, I want to go into something first. Uh, the audience can invest in the companies, but second, um, what kind of risks are associated with this? What, what, how do you see, you know, every investment entails a risk. Um, what kind of risks come along with uh, the potential, uh, co the companies that you can potentially invest in? The risk associated to uh, venture investment, for example, if you have um your money and you put it under your mattress unless someone get into a broke into your house 
you have the certainty that the money is going to be there. But if you invest in uh, startups, uh, especially startups at early stage or at the stage in which they are starting to grow, there are risks associated, but there are opportunities. So for example, just to give you an idea, when a person um, invested in, er in early stages at Uber, and I'm thinking Orin Mitchells, and I will share the link if uh, Eva help us out there uh, on what was the return on the early investors in a company such as Uber. This gentleman invested $5,000. Yes, he could have risked losing it all, because if Uber didn't get the money, didn't get the permit, didn't uh, seize yeah. the market and transform a complete industry, he wouldn't have had a massive opportunity. But he invested 5,000 and at the moment of the IPO, he got uh, over $24 million in return. And this story happened uh, across uh, different industries in early stage companies that have the potential to become unicorns and these are the type of companies that we are presenting. But more importantly, Diego, is people need to understand that these are risk investment. So they need yeah. to be prepared to lose it all and hope that they will make a lot of money or some money along the road as well. But knowing that this is a, a an investment and as an investment, it's a smart gambling. There are we'll get back to this. We'll get back to this. But um, I want to I want to just do a very quick recap. We have the Jobs Act uh, uh, passed during the Obama administration that allows this kind of investment. Is there any other regulation that we have to keep in mind uh, around this or just the Jobs Act? In Jobs Act, there are different types of regulation. For example, mm -hmm. we use in the United States Regulation D that allows only accredited investors. And accredited investors are people who make a certain amount of money and it's assumed that they have the understanding to make or the access to make uh, wise decisions in investment. We use other regulations to enable investors from other parts of the world to co-invest with these accredited investors and with the circle of money. But we are also working with companies like, for example, Google and Microsoft for startups and many different innovation hubs. So the companies that we present has been vetted and has been recommended by many industry experts. Still, a risk people need to understand that they need to do their homework, they need to educate themselves, they need to consult, and they never, ever, ever need to risk more than what they can afford, because this is a risk investment. And we need to make it very, very clear, because in these bets, there are massive opportunities, but also it could be lost, and they could lose all the money or two. Selena, in 30 seconds, which are the keys to investing in high potential pre-IPO companies well, as you see there, it? We have a decalogue and I will refer people to a book, which is a Unicorn Investment 1.0 that we will release very, very soon. We'll share it with yep. you. We'd love to have your feedback also to guide us on what type of content you want to see in this conversation because we want to keep it open. But one important thing when you look at a company and its potential is of course, what is the addressable market size? How big is the opportunity? Is this an opportunity to serve a niche or this is a business that could scale globally, that could bring some other business opportunities along that can create a platform or a system in which today you sell this, but tomorrow you can bring yeah. many different things. Another thing is, is the need quite urgent? Because timing is everything when you, when it comes to business opportunities. I can tell you many stories on when I was wrong because I was right about the idea, but I was wrong about the timing and I lost money on that. The we'll get back to, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it in, in, in the next part of the question, but in the next part of the talk. But before we get into that, just, just remind me the two or three things I have to keep in mind before investing. Market size, yeah. the uh, disruptive technology, and also the ability of the founder to execute and the, the timing. There are more than two. I cannot say two because with two, you won't check the boxes. So at least I'll give you four, but at least we saw 10. And there are tons of data pointers that show what can turn into a unicorn that we will share more yeah. in other occasions. No, and, and we, we'll talk about this in, in, in this session, in this, in this money talk session. But uh, I'd like to... Go back to one of the points that we've been touching on. Um, 
I'd like to get a better idea first. Sorry, first of all, how can people watch the show, uh, watch the Unicorn Hunters show? How can, you know, where is it? Okay, the Unicorn Hunter show is a show for everyone. So we wanted to do it democratic. So we choose as our first option to go through streaming. We are expanding this streaming through partnerships with Fortune, with Entrepreneur, and also with Forbes, and we are starting syndication on TV. But they can go to unicornhunters.com. They can watch it there. They can watch it in LinkedIn. In my profile, Silvina Moschini in LinkedIn, in Unicorn Hunters profiles. They can watch it in YouTube and in many different platforms. And we release episodes usually every Monday at 10 a.m. But as this coming Monday is a holiday, we will release the upcoming episode, which is Mechanical Trees, an amazing company that has a very, very noble goal to help reduce the impact on the environment by reprocessing carbon dioxide. So they can go to our platforms. They can go to unicorn.com, uh, unicornhunters.com, and also YouTube and the social media associated to our a program which are LinkedIn, YouTube, and many other out there that we will also share here in the links so you can have easy access. And I have the obvious question. You are a technology entrepreneur, very successful one. You brought a company to a more than 1 billion, actually $2 billion uh, dollar valuation. You're an executive producer. How did you Exact. How did you get into into television? How 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 did you go from your uh, personal um, company uh, global placement of stock that made your company a unicorn into um, sitting at a panel that is called the Circle of Money with Wozniak, Bass, uh, Rosie Rios, and and other. Uh, very well other uh, significant names let's let's put it in those terms well in different ways first as you know we share a uh, many times a screen at cnn uh diego for those that uh, doesn't know him yet he led la economia de dragon the dragon's economy in the cnn uh, we are in shanghai and many more many more things and i have the enormous privilege to work together with the cnn espanol team as um, an industry guest expert talking about many things related to the internet. As you probably know, I miss internet. And this is because there are not many senoritas or ladies in, in, the, in the internet. So that's where the, the name came from. And then from our own journey, uh, Diego, we um, raised money, uh, inviting investors from around the world to co-build our company. Transparent Business is about bringing transparent access to opportunities, software to manage remote teams, a remote talent from all over the world, and now access to capital for the entrepreneurs out there that are building their companies, that are building hopefully the next big unicorn, but also to people like the people in our audience that want to see the next Apple from the ground up. Actually, this was yeah. the reason why Steve Wozniak accepted our invitation to be part of the circle of money. Imagine how excited, like, you know, a woman from a teeny tiny city in Argentina have the opportunity to share the table with the God of Silicon Valley, with Steve yeah. Wozniak, who wants to give back with us to the entrepreneurs and also to the people, because we believe that we need to enable more people to become millionaires. And investing in startups at the time in which they are growing can be one way that we can help them achieve that. This is how I said, like, well, I love TV. I love investment. I love entrepreneurs. I love to support entrepreneurs, especially women entrepreneurs. And we said, why don't we take a show in which we can educate the masses about the opportunities out there brought by the Jobs Act to invest alongside with top luminaries from the world uh, in companies that could be the next Apple or the next Facebook or the next SpaceX. So here I am. Yeah, and Silvina, you whenever you're 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 at the circle of money, you 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 the the, the entrepreneur, the project, the company uh, tells you a lot about them. There's a pitch. They explain. They answer tough, very tough questions. 
And then there's a moment in which you, des you decide whether you'll invest, you will do your homework or not invest. I'd like to understand what drives that decision in you uh, at, at, when, at that point in the circle of money? What kind of thinking, homework, uh, what kind of due diligence goes uh, in that process? Okay, Diego, every person invests for different reasons. So I can talk to you about my stuff and I can tell you some other reasons why other people will decide to invest. Um, well, I review a lot of the companies because we have access to their investor pitches they pitch to different panels and experts before getting into the show. There is a lot of screening going on from the companies that are recommended by our partners and that we scout on our own. So for me, what is important? I look at the founder. I wanna know that the founder has a lot of skin on the game. I love founders that invested their own money and that they are out there to do whatever it takes to make the company successful. So you need to see the fire in their eyes because this is super tough. And as a founder, I know that many times you wanna quit, you wanna give up, give up, but you have a dream and you have a purpose and this purpose makes you unstoppable. Also, I look at the purpose as well. And if this company has a purpose to solve any of the most pressing issues that the, the world is today facing, I would like that because I want companies that not only propose and suggest opportunities to do good businesses, but also that impact people, planet, and profits. Because at the end of the day, we need to generate profit for our shareholders. Yep. And also for me, it's super important that it's something that I can understand and relate to. I will not invest in a company just because it is a good investment. I, re I relate to the founder, I relate to the product, if this is something that I think I will use, or I think it will be something that I, I understand so I can provide afterwards more value to the entrepreneur because this is not about the money. We put money on that sometimes, sometimes not. We invite people to put their money, but we also seek to help them uh, in their journey, providing access to capital, access to market, access to uh, education and access to people that could become their partners and help them scale. So this is something that we continue working with the scale-ups, which are the grown-up startups after the, the show. But some other people just invest because it's a good business or no. they think they can make money. Nevertheless, I'd like to know, when you promise an investment in the show, you do it through the same vehicles that the company offers to the public. You're like one more member of the public or the audience that's watching that entrepreneur, right? And exactly the same terms. So we don't invest in different terms. We invest exactly in the same terms that the general audience uh, will invest. And the transactions are handled by each one of the entrepreneurs or their investor relations team. Our job is to select the startups or scale-ups, we send them grilled with all respect the entrepreneurs in the show, decided whether we will invest or not. Sometimes we invest, sometimes we don't. Some, some people invest, sometimes uh, all the people invest, like as we saw with Lauren Foundos, a, an incredible entrepreneur founder of Fit Forte. Wozniak said like, I admire your engineer. I almost had a heart attack because I was so happy to see a women founder in front of the God of Silicon Valley saying that he uh, uh, treasured her engineer and he admired the work that she, she does. But exactly the same terms, but the, the transactions are dealt by each one of the companies. So they can ask any kind of questions to them, request the PPM, which is a private placement memorandum, do the research. And of course, if they wanna come back to us, we will provide more education on how to invest and we'll release very soon uh, training courses and, uh, and information on what they need to do to identify these pre-IPO opportunities. But it's exactly, exactly the same terms as the people will invest. We have a comment from Constantine. Impact investing is going to be the next venture capital. Uh, he's, he adds a well said, Silvina. Um, do you agree? Absolutely. I think doing good is a fantastic business. And I think that all entrepreneurs out there need to think first, 
what are the most pressing issues that the world is facing today? And believe me, Diego, I, now that we are just slowly getting out of the pandemic, we have massive opportunities as entrepreneurs. We can hack an employment. We can help the environment. And if you see the companies that we select, they're not look, only looking for diverse entrepreneurs, but we're looking for people that do not look like the typical entrepreneur that you see in Silicon Valley. I mean, yeah. rarely uh, you will see one wearing a hoodie and arriving in escape. Uh, we are uh, doing our best effort to have women. We have a person that has Asperger's syndrome, an amazing founder. We'll have a Mexican founder who's the CEO of Pfizer, Pedro, who is yeah. fighting cancer with his company, Stratton Therapeutics. We'll have another live conversation with him next week. We have a, a former NASA and Wall Street executive that uh, launched a company that developed a lead a UV light to cure, uh, sorry, to kill bacteria and viruses in close environment, including COVID. So these are the type of companies that we love. Of course, we will look for more companies uh, from around the world. We invite every one of you to submit their companies as well if you are an entrepreneur and yeah please 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 explain how to submit uh if someone's watching and wants to be wants to join the show okay there are conditions that we uh have for the pre-screening we are looking at companies that are valued between uh 20 and 60 million dollars because they are a scale up for this particular show we'll have another program for earlier stage companies who own companies that had a super solid management team that has a proven business model. So we want to see traction. We need to understand also that the market is ready for them and that there is an urgent demand and companies that can scale fast if we provide the money. Companies that are looking for 20 to 50 million a year, this will be our sweet spot this, uh, this year. And they can go to unicornhunters.com and in that link that Eva is going to share, they can submit their application. We are going to release the second batch of the first season. The first season, of course, is the pilot we are learning from you, from your feedback. And, and we plan to produce 50 episodes per year, starting with 50 in 2022. This year, we'll probably have um, around 30 episodes. So we'll record end of August and we'll record in November again. And, and we'll be thrilled to partner up with you to see uh, companies and amazing founders that are many times overlooked. So we want to have yeah. them and we want to highlight them. And we count on you, we count on Impulsa, on Corfon, many of the innovation hubs from around the world to help us identify and bring them to the public so you can co-build the future unicorn with the founder and their team as well. Well, um, I'd like to, and we're, kind of running out of time. So if you have a question, this is the time. Um, I'd like to go over uh, uh, the, 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 these keys to investing that we touched on briefly a while ago. Um, when we, could, you, could you please expand? There's a number of topics I'd like to talk about. One of them um, is, could you please expand what is uh, the key to investing beyond the three that you have already mentioned, uh, scalability, uh, of course, impact, of course, profits. Um, could you please expand on that? Education. The most important thing that you need to do before investment is to educate yourself, to define what will be your comfort zone mm -hmm. in terms of the amount of money that you are willing to invest. And, just and how do you define it? How do you, Sylvina, define the the you, the amount that case, you're willing well, yeah I, and it varies from companies to companies i like to invest a small amount and then see how the founder is performing see mm -hmm. also their communication style for us one key uh factor in our successful fundraising that we should close the equity round because now we are doing that because we don't want to give away more equity for unicorn hunters that is by the way uh, the um, a larger shareholder of, sorry, transparent business, that is by the way, the larger shareholders of uh, Unicorn Hunters is 
the ability to communicate transparently with your investors. So for me, it's about building trust, putting a small amount. In the case of Unicorn Hunters, investment can start at $1,000 and then see how the, uh, the company is performing. In some cases, I invested 20,000, in some cases, 10,000, in some cases, 5,000, in some cases, 50,000. But mm -hmm. I could go, because I do a lot of research and I'm much more familiar with this, but I could go as low as 1,000 and then see if I like what I see. How they and then you top up the investments. And after, if, if you really like what you see, you can top it up. Totally. Over time, of course, you are at the risk that once they are starting to deliver more and hitting milestones, the valuation will change. This is how our company reached first unicorn status and now is in our $2 billion valuation because we promise we deliver our valuation it has raised and our vision is that we will take it a lot higher once we take it to, um, uh, to the public uh, via our uh, direct listing or IPO, depending upon uh, what we decide at the time of uh, going public to create value for our shareholders. So you start early, you put little money, you uh, gain trust on the, the project or you feel more comfortable, you add more, and yep, then yep. you can progressively increase and this is how I will do it. But every people invest differently. Some people, mm -hmm. you know, said like, if I invest like $100,000 and I don't mind uh, losing them, or like, for example, I'll give you one number. Garrett Camp, early investors in Uber. He invested $220,000 and his return was over $1 billion at the moment of the IPO. Okay. Garrett has spare money. So if he loses like 200,000 is like, you know, for some people is, I won't say like pocket change because I won't be disrespectful because it's a lot of money. But if you have a massive amount of money, it's like you don't really care, the larger the amount, the chances are bigger that if the investment uh, grows, it, it can be significantly more impactful and important. I have one final question uh, that you just mentioned. You said you do your homework, you take your time, you do what you should before investing, which is which is key to any investment and to any money decision in life. Um, do you have a favorite source? For doing well, I yes. Well, Google. I do a lot of research on Google. I yep. look at what the media, the analysts. I try to understand as much as I can the industry, I try the product or the services myself if they are available. I uh, do as much as I uh, can on my end, also of course, reading carefully the PPM, but I also tap on to experts. Like, you know, for example, if it's a product that I don't understand, I ask experts. And this is about the reason why we build up a circle of money with people that come from different walks of life and expertise. like. Steve is yep. the engineer. So if I want to see how a product is built from the engineer standpoint before making a decision, if Steve says that she likes it, it's super big deal for me because I trust his judgment even more than I trust my engineering judgment. And the same thing with, because I'm not an engineer, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Rosie Rios, treasurer of the United States, her signature is in 85 percent of the currency that is in circulation. So she knows money. For more, talking about regulation that could impact the building, uh, the building of the company, or that could impact the, the future, because there are like potential things that are related to makers or breakers uh, on in terms of uh, what can be done or what can cannot be done in an industry that uh, someone with strong knowledge of public affairs or so policy making can understand much be better than the lay person out there. So I look at them and see, okay, yeah. is there any hack, any potential massive break that can accelerate this? And of course, I look at Alex, my co-founder, a massive source of inspiration for me because he built a, an, a, a massive emporium, emporium, emporium in 
his early 23 in Russia uh, before yeah, yeah. he uh, deflected from, from Russia because he didn't like the communism when he built the largest commercial bank in the country and the largest stock exchange at the age of 23 because he had opportunities. Um, Silvino, we got to go, but before we go, uh, Constantine asks, would you, which book, and you have only one slot, you cannot, you cannot give me a shelf. I give you only one opportunity. Which one book would you recommend our uh, followers, viewers right now uh, to go out and read? Well, I love one book that is about understanding the hardship of building businesses, which is the hard things about hard things. This will be one of the books that if you want to get into the entrepreneur's mind and everything that he goes through, this will be the book that you will read. And it will help you also to understand how opportunities arise. And give me another one. I will give you another one. Mm. So if you feel like... Uh, okay, okay. It's 4th of July. Come one on. More. Give me but one more. But not more than that. Super Only one. Fun. Read the story behind Uber and see how companies can massively disrupt industry yeah. by going against pretty much anything. When you have the right amount of money and you have the right amount of founders and the right business that will change how things are done, massive things and massive returns can happen. So Super Pump, written by a reporter who has followed Uber for a, a long, long time, can give you a lot of insight on how a company uh, changed from being starting as an illegal tax operation in one of the most iconic uh, companies of our times. Super fun. I, I, I strongly recommend that. And with on this note, we end our conversation. Our time is up. Um, next, uh, the next news you're going to be hearing from Unicorn Hunters is the launch of the Mechanical Trees episode. And of course, stay tuned because there will be many more uh, money talks with uh, Silvina and guests, and this will continue. Uh, and Silvina, uh, great talking with you, great spending this time with you. Thank you very much. Absolutely, my pleasure. And I'll take the opportunity to invite people out there and their friends and their families and anyone that they want to bring into the investment day, which is sign up at Unicorn Hunters to be part of the Unicorn Hunters Club. It's free for now. We want to give early access to our followers and to the people that are joining in this uh, amazing initiative. So you'll have uh, the first and the best information on how to hunt for the next unicorn. And thank you, Diego. And thank you everyone for joining us as well. Great. So we'll meet again in, in the next in the next few days in another money talk. So stay very tuned and we'll meet soon. And of course, follow the unicornhunters.com page to stay across the latest. Bye. See you later. Bye.